Um, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to uh, introduce you to Ovi O'Brien. He was 30 years in the United States Navy. He flies the Corsair for us, and he flew the Corsair during the Korean War. Uh, with that, thank you, Ovi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I hated that word if you said shot down. <laughs> but anyway, I want to uh, talk to you about the first there and uh, uh, my experience with in Korea. Uh, what is a legend? A legend, the first there is a legend, and it began in 1938 when the Navy set out its requirements for a, a high speed signal uh, chief fighter to operate off the carrier. Uh, it was demonstrated to the Navy, the prototype in 1940. Uh, in 1941, uh, the Navy signed a contract with uh, Boston, uh, Bay Bought, to for 584 aircraft. This was before Pearl Harbor. In 1942, the first Corsair was delivered. But uh, there was a, a great, after Pearl Harbor, there was a great demand for the Corsair, for a, a new fighter. Uh, Corsair, uh, when the uh, fans fought, contracted out to Goodyear uh, and Brewster to, to build the Corsair. The Goodyear uh, planes was called the F FT-1D, and that's what we have out here. Brewster was the F, uh, F-3A. They, have, they only built 750, but Goodyear uh, produced 4,006 4, Corsairs. Uh, bought, uh, produced 4,699 and Brewster before they went out of business, 735. So there were a lot of Corsairs built, it was, uh, over 12,000, 12,500 of them. Uh, the British and the uh, New Zealand Air Forces also had the Corsair. Uh, the Corsair is a uh, inverted gold wing, as you can easily see. A wingspan of 41 feet, when it's, the wings are folded like they are now, it's 17 feet. It's uh, 33 feet long and weighs between 9 and 10,000 pounds empty and uh, 14, 19,000 pounds when it's loaded. Uh, the the FT-1D, which is the same, exact same plane as the F-41, has six 50 caliber machine guns. It, it carried 2,300 rounds, so that's a good four or five minutes of, of ammunition. The plane is powered by a, a, a Pratt Whitney R2800 as a, which is one of the first ones. So the only difference between the early planes and the later ones is the, uh, the modification of the engine. Uh, it develops 2,000 horsepower, the later one is 23,300. 23, uh, the maximum speed of the first Corsair was, uh, was on the demonstration flight was five, 405 miles an hour, which was the first uh, fighter plane to exceed 400 miles an hour. Uh, it cruises, it, the FT-1D at 182, the later plane is 227 miles an hour, which is pretty good. The, uh, the climb rate is 3,000 feet a minute on the early ones and almost 4,000 feet on the later ones. Uh, the service ceiling for the T1D is 37,000 feet and the, uh, the later, later plane got up to 40, uh, 42,000. It carried 200, and 37 gallons of fuel internally, and we can hang two 150 gallon tanks on the plane. So that, that will give you about 1100 to 1200 mile range. Uh, going back to the British, the British did have uh, purchased 1500 of our airplanes in New Zealand, 425. In the beginning, the uh, Corsair was not suitable for carrier work. The, 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 the oleos and struts were uh, tight. Every time they landed on the carrier, it would bounce. Uh, the seat was too low. The 
open the feet. The tail strut was just had to had to be raised. So there was a four or five different problems which were resolved. The plane was restricted and carried off until uh, 1944. Uh, well, the, prior to 44, though, the, the carrier, or the, uh, the course air was, was flown by the Marines primarily from the Solomon Islands. Uh, there was one Navy squadron, VF-17, the Jolly Rogers, which our airplane was painted as. The Coast on the they, they operated from the Solomon Islands. And uh, they, in 79 days, it was always shot down. Uh, 154 enemy airplanes. And our uh, our course air was in the markings of a fellow called Ray Beachman. Ray Beachman was a Norfolk native. He was raised in Kitty Hawk and is uh, known as the Kitty Hawk Kid. He was the first pilot of the DF 17 and the Dolly Rogers to shoot down an airplane. Uh, and later on, he, he was shot down and landed in the water with no place. When he retired from the Navy after 21 years, he began a PT at ODU, uh, got a degree in uh, education and taught at North, North Side Junior High School for 17 years. Unfortunately, he died in 1997. Uh, the, the airplane that we have here represents the plane he flew, number 31. He had, he had shot down two airplanes, and that's indicated on the fire airplane with a, uh, the rising sun. Our airplane here was built in 1945. One of the later ones did not see combat. It was stationed in California and New York and uh, was put in storage in 1956. Uh, from 1956 to 1964, it sat out there, I think, in Tucson, Arizona. In 1964, it was purchased by uh, the, the civilian who uh, bought it for his son for a toy. He found out that it was not a toy <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. And, and he sold it and bought himself an SAJ, I don't know what it is. It went through a series of owners until 1999 when the fighter factory did buy it. It was restored, it was restored in 2001. And our plane is well known in the in the, circle, the aviation circles is one of the best restored first airs in the world. There are only there are less than twenty four flying first airs. There are other first airs lines in the static without any but uh, less than twenty four flying today. Uh, okay, now flying the airplane. The airplane's a real joy to fly. It's very responsive to the controls. Uh, on the pre-flight, which we'll be doing, uh, we have to pull the engine, the uh, prop crew, to clear the oil out of the cylinders. We'll walk around it, check for leaks, check the oil and fuel, make sure it's okay. Then the climb in the plane, and it's all strapped in, and check all the switches and the correct positions and everything. And you have a fire bottle, outside and uh, you start. I think that most of you have those screen sheets which indicate the, the, the uh, pre-flight start procedures. Once that little rascal starts, you uh, have to warm it up to the up. And when you pack, you actually slowly and make that turn because you can't do squat after the time. <laughs> My life there. <laughs> on, on the take, then you run it up to check your mags, check your uh, prop control, and uh, say a Hail Mary. And, <laughs> and uh, get on the end of the runway, get your tail, lock your tail wheel. Of course, before you do all this, you put the wings in the spread position. <laughs> Get out there, you, you run the power up until you feel the feel and bounce a little bit, and you let go of the brakes and then add the rest of the power. And uh, an airplane, once you take off, it almost it seems like as soon as, as soon as it starts to roll, you use the stick forward and use lots of right rudder because that airplane has a lot of torque. Yeah, and, uh, at about 90 miles an hour, the 